A few years back, I had a buddy of mine who went into a lucrative career, and that was selling uh, microscopes. And they sold these to, at the time, um, you know, big pharma pharma companies, tech, biotech companies, uh, companies like Genentech, which is huge in California. And um, he had graduated a few years before me, and he had invited me to attend this business meeting that he was uh, going to. And um, he said, yeah, man, make sure you dress, you know, dress nice. And at the time, I thought about going into this career right after graduation. And so I thought I might be meeting some of the representatives and things like that. And um, so I came dressed, um, you know, professionals. And I had my nice church shoes on. And he was dressed even more professional than me. He had a suit, had a tie. The brother was legit, right? He had it going on. We get to the meeting. It's at um, at a hotel ballroom like a hilton okay it was nice about 20 people showed up food and everything was a great event it was him and about two other brothers they was dressed real nice right the white guys that were there let me get to them in a minute they were there asian guys dressed up indian guys dressed up real nice white guys very casual, sketchers on, converse on. <sighs> Some guys in sandals, right? And nobody is saying anything. One person showed up in some Birkenstocks, believe it or not. And I'm sitting here, I'm looking at how all the non-white people are dressed, but I'm looking at my buddies because they're dressed even better than everybody else. So the event happens, and I'm sitting there pondering about this whole thing, and um, after the event ends in the car, I said, brother, man, you know, it was a nice event, but, you know, you told me to dress up, and we were dressed up. The Asian guys were dressed up, and the Indian guys were dressed up, but these white guys were business casual. Some guys even had on sandals. And they're in the same position as you. Why did you tell me to dress up when they didn't, nigga? Because I could have worn my damn drawers up in here. He said, bro, I'm going to be real with you. I'm a black man in this company. If I come dressed like them, they are going to judge me for it. I can't ever come looking like them. Now, it's an unspoken rule, but I got to always be on my P's and Q's and shit because people are always looking at me. That was enough for me, right? And I want to talk to you black men about this because my daddy used to always tell me when I was coming up in the 80s, son, if you're going to compete with white folks, you always have to be better. You're going to always have to push harder. You're going to have to be on point. And see, this is the tough conversation for black people to have. It's a tough conversation for black men to have. Because, see, what we're really talking about a lot of times when it comes to black men and their branding. Why can the white man get away with stuff? And I can't. Why can the white man come in and look unprofessional? And he can get okay. People think that he's smart. People think that he's bright. But if I want to come dressed in my stuff, if I want to come look at professional, people are going to have a problem with it. Why not me? And see, this is the conversation that we're going to have to have even in 2019. But I will tell you this. You're right. But that doesn't change. That's how it is. For right now, that's how it is. I will tell any black man wanting to be a professional, any black man wanting to be successful, any black man doing anything for himself, that's how it is, bro. And those are the rules right now. If you don't like it, that's the way it is. When you make up your mind that you want to compete on a corporate level, on the business level, on the entrepreneurial level, you cannot do 
the same things that white people do. You can't. I'm sorry. The road for you is not the same as it is for Brad or Aloysius. The reality is you are going to have to be on point every day. You're going to have to be on time every day. You're going to have to be uh, more careful with what you say every day. And you're going to have to be the best and the epitome of the black male brand every day, brother. I'm sorry. That is the way it is. And I will be lying to you if it was different. And the reason why is because they make the, they make the rules. You don't. And there are some rules that are, are unspoken here. Until you have power, until you have businesses, until you do things for yourself or you can come to wherever you want to dress and do what you want to do and you have that F you money then you can make your own rules up but as of right now I need you to not be focused on why he can do this and you can't because a lot of brothers get caught up in that I'm not going into corporate America because of that I don't want to take this because of that listen brother I want you to hear me out A lot of people who might even misjudge you are not always white folks, okay? Now, I, I, I was talking to Brother Andre. I was talking to Brother Gabriel. What we talked about was going to co-working spaces, okay? And if you're an individual brand and you show up in jeans, T-shirt, um, backwards hat, and Jordans, the people who are going to misjudge you the most a lot of times it might not even be white. You're going to get the most harshest criticisms from black people. All right. A lot of you brothers who might want to do things. In the, and I'm going to tell you right now, doing business in the black community is a, is the, is the biggest, 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 biggest opportunity there is on earth. Same thing in Africa. Africa trades only 15% amongst itself. Their biggest, biggest, Biggest opportunity is doing business amongst each other. Okay, so what I want to tell you is that to do to 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 do to 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 to, to really get out there, if you really want to make a lucrative network in a lucrative situation for yourself, you can do a whole lot of things in black business. But I want to talk about this. If that's your goal, you cannot represent yourself like the typical Negro because black people are going to hold you to a higher standard than they will the white man. Black people will allow the white man to come to events and stuff and flip-flops and sandals, and he's still going to be looked at as competent. He's still going to be looked at as knowing what he's doing. See, that's how white people are viewed. The white man is viewed that it doesn't matter what I wear. I'm still bright. I'm still smart. Therefore, I don't need to wear these things because I'm already signed off based on my race. The black man, if he wears that, he's dignified. Oh, he must not be smart. He must not be intelligent. And see, for you, you have to wear your intelligence on your clothes and your mind and what you say. You understand that? And black people are going to hold you more accountable to that. And they're looking for any reason. Because they're self hurt you in the black community. So you need to understand that as a black man, People are not used to seeing you being competitive. People are not used to doing this. You have to just deal with that until we can do better for right now. All right? I'm not telling nobody to kiss nobody's ass, but what you got to do is you got to learn how to play the game. A lot of brothers don't want to play the game and then get mad when they lose. When you are out doing business for your brand, dress the right way. You're managing a brand, dress the right way. You're doing business, dress the right way. You look, you're supposed to look a certain way, dress the right way. You want to set up deals, dress the right way. How you look is going to determine what you can do. And, 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 and unfortunately, you're not going to be able to have that privilege as other groups do. Because people are going to look at you sometimes and judge you on what they judge the black race. You have to fight against those stereotypes. So the one thing that you can start to do is to start to do that until you can do better. 
All right. And it's a tough conversation, but black men have to accept that for right now. That don't mean this is our lot, but that means that you can't get away with that and you can't get mad. Don't let that disturb you. Keep your focus on what you're supposed to be doing. And what you're supposed to be doing is doing the work, looking like you want to look, building up the image and representing your brand. And let me tell you this last thing. How you deal with business and deal professionally, you can either open or close doors for other black men. Indirectly, you can open or close doors. Every time you go out and talk to somebody, you are opening or closing the door for another African-American male. Do right by our people. All right. So as you know, the buffoon remains the all time high. All my contact information is below. Make sure you subscribe to me. Hit the bell. Peace.